Joining us right now is Meili de Montchelin, France's permanent representative to the OECD. Uh, Ms. Montchelin, let me begin by asking you about the escalation in Middle East tensions. Uh, in OECD's view, what impact is this likely to have on the global economy? So many thanks for your question. First, I think we all are very concerned by this escalation and uh, I think all efforts are being made uh, by many countries and including France to uh, tame the escalation and to protect human lives and reduce I mean, suff uh, human suffering of what has been a, a very uh, dangerous uh, spiral of uh, violences. When it comes to the economy, uh, well, the OECD just published its uh, economic outlook and it shows that there are two ways into which these uh, tensions and geopolitical tensions are potentially affecting uh, the global economy. First is the uncertainty it creates that can reduce investment globally. And the second is the disruption in the commercial uh, and uh, maritime routes, uh, in, in particular in the Red Sea. And this can lead globally by a higher cost of imports and therefore a higher inflation. So these are the two main risks the OECD is currently uh, foreseeing. Right. Uh, I would like to ask you about uh, India's place in the volatile geopolitical environment we are in. Uh, how do you see investment prospects in India? Well, India is a very large country by its population. Uh, it's a country which is putting investment at the center of its strategy when it comes to infrastructure, highway, energy. So in that sense, um, the prospect for India, when, it, when we look at its own economy, are prospect of growth. And this is the strategy of the government to continue to invest in education, to boost human capital, and to invest in infrastructure uh, to improve physical capital. So these two levers are very strong levers and will continue uh, in the medium, short, and even long term for sure. Right. Uh, any sectors which uh, excite you the most in India from an investment point of view or a manufacturing point of view? Well, I think the energy sector uh, is a sector that we all know is in full transition uh, in India, where there are many, many investments uh, from Indians, from also uh, external international companies, because we know the energy transition challenge is a very large challenge not only because we have to change uh, the models of production of electricity, but also just because there is economic growth. So the more growth you have, the more energy needs you have. So energy, I think, is, a, is maybe the first, uh, because there is no economy without energy. Uh, the second sector is, uh, by definition, um, everything related to innovation. France and India has, have very strong ties in terms of aeronautic. Uh, Airbus uh, is a very strong player, and, and where France and India do cooperate a lot, space. Uh, is a new also sector uh, where there are lots of uh, joint investments and for sure the whole manufacturing. When you have a population of one billion people, well, people do need many, many different things and producing on the Indian soil uh, is a strategy that the government wants to promote and where France has many, to, has many companies also to, to propose and they are investing um, in India uh, with a number of French large companies uh, being present uh, on your country. Right. I would like to ask you about uh, energy transition and the kind of funding we now require uh, in order to raise the ambition and speed up our energy transition. So ahead of the COP summit, uh, any ballpark figure that you'd like to share with us uh, as a representative of France, what would your ambition be in terms of climate financing? So climate finance, green finance has been at the core of the uh, priorities of the French President Macron and of its government now for many, many years. And you know that's in Paris that we signed in 2015 the COP21 agreement. So our ambition is really to find the funding. The funding will come from many sources, domestic sources, international sources, public international sources like the World Bank, but also private international finance. We know that at the moment, uh, developing and emerging economies do need an additional $1 trillion per year to meet their most needed energy and development needs. So this $1 trillion, we have to find a way to mobilize it, to also move it from advanced economies to the developing and emerging economies. And we are working very closely with India since the G20 uh, that India uh, chaired to find ways to reform the multilateral development banks to reform the private sector, to reform regulation, so as we can have this flow of the, this trillion we need 
to achieve the goals we have globally on climate and on development. Right. Uh, the, the, the French government is organizing the Global AI Summit next year. What can we expect from that? So this AI Action Summit will take place in February 2025. It's a very important moment, which is the third summit that will happen in history of global leaders meeting and discussing and, and deciding what they can do and should do together on AI. There are five topics which will be covered. Innovation, what is AI available and allowing today? Second is about security. How do we make AI safe and not prone to cyber attacks? Third is about labor. How will AI affect labor markets, workers globally? How do unions uh, can still play a role if there is more technology? The fourth is about the governance of AI. How do we share the rules, the procedures? And here, GPI, the Global Partnership on AI, that France India and now 44 countries have joined is a major cornerstone of this new governance of AI we want to see emerging. And the last topic is really core in the uh, Indian and French vision, which is what we call AI for social good. How do we put AI at the service of the uh, unserved, of the poor people? How do we put AI at the service of health? How do we put people at the service of education? And I just visited a very interesting uh, center you have here in New Delhi, name uh, Wabwani AI, which is an NGO working on the key challenges of India, uh, one about typically tuberculosis, very impressive technology, allowing already hundreds of thousands of people to be tested, to have an early diagnosis, and then an early treatment of tuberculosis. So in Paris, we will speak not only about AI as we read in the newspapers, but also AI for the people, AI now in effect, in reality, to face challenges that without the technology will require much more money or much more time or sometimes not even, there is no alternative solutions than to uh, test new technologies in a safe, human-centric uh, and protective uh, way. All right, uh, Ms. Monchelin, thank you so much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18.